This video was sponsored by Squarespace, an all-in-one platform that makes it quick and easy to make a beautiful website for your online presence. So this is a drawing I found from 2005, a whole 17 years ago, and I believe it's my character Kima, although I'm not sure why her eyes are blue in this one. Um, typically they're supposed to be orange, but anyways. So welcome to another sketchbook session. Uh, these are some of the materials that I'll be using today. Of course, alcohol markers once again, except this time I also pulled out a bunch of super old Prismacolor and Copic markers as well. I, um, I was just looking through my old stuff and I remembered that I shoved them in a box and put them all the way back in this one storage corner place that I have. And uh, I actually haven't touched them in about three years maybe, so... Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I forgot how many I had. There were so many, maybe like 200 or something. And so I ended up going through all of them manually just to check if they still work and see what kind of colors I have. And um, I was surprised that they actually held up pretty well. I only ended up throwing out about six, which altogether is not bad. And also um, noticed that I had some repeating colors and some of the ones that I threw out were actually of the same color so i suspect there was something wrong with that one color that for some reason whatever reason dried out quicker than the other ones but regardless i do think that they held up exceptionally well considering the fact that i bought most of them at least uh 10 years ago i would say maybe eight at the at the least um but probably more than that for a lot of them and um yeah i'll get to the story about how i started using alcohol markers in the first place a little bit later in the video but yeah first things first this is a draw this again art challenge video slash sketchbook spread so in case some of you guys have never heard of this challenge i actually don't know if you could really call it a challenge i guess it's more it's just like a fun thing it's not particularly challenging but uh the basic concept is that you find a piece of art that you created some time ago it doesn't have to be a super long time ago like it is in this case it could be something from last year or I don't know, even six months ago, it doesn't really matter. It's just something to measure your personal progress and to maybe uh, tackle a concept that you have tackled once before and see how you approach it this time around with um, your newfound skills. So I personally absolutely love this challenge. I think it's one of the most fun ones in the art community that float around now and then. So I have actually done it once before and um, Last time I actually found an even older drawing from like 2001 and that was a ton of fun, but I did it digitally back then. So this time I thought it would be great to do it traditionally and using more or less the same mediums that I did last time. So that was kind of fun. And um, obviously since I have been using the alcohol markers uh, in my last session, I thought this was a good time to bring that back. And like I mentioned in my last video, I did actually forget that I was going to do this um, and ended up drawing something else. But here we are. So um, I picked this specific drawing while I was sorting out my old art um, for the purpose of putting some stuff into my new upcoming art book, just in case you guys haven't uh, don't know about this yet, but I've mentioned before I'm working on a new art book with uh, 3D Total Publishing, so that's super exciting, and I will be mentioning it again, but just so it's out there. Anyways, so I was going through my old art, and um, I found a bunch of stuff, a lot of loose paper, and actually a lot of sketchbooks, which I used to use a lot more frequently back in the day when I was in high school and this is from around when I was 15 um, I believe I was like in grade 9 in high school or something like that so yeah um, this character is Kima you guys may have seen her before I have been actually drawing her a lot more often in the last couple of years um, there's definitely been some years gone by where I didn't touch her like didn't draw her at all but um, since she is another, actually, a quite prominent character in the comic that I'm currently writing, slash rewriting, called, um, Gloaming Vale. Yeah, I've been thinking about her a lot. Uh, obviously her story has changed about a million times since I created her, so I'm not gonna bother getting into that. But, um, yeah, I, I was surprised to find a drawing of her from back then, and it kind of made me remember that 
I do believe that she is actually one of the first official like original characters that I've ever created which I believe must have been around when I was like 13 or something so that's pretty crazy because it's something that I haven't thought about in a really long time but now that I think about it yeah she was definitely the first because before that it was all like you know like fake Sailor Moon characters and other Sailor Moon dupes essentially so this was the first standalone character that had nothing to do with Sailor Moon so thought that was kind of neat anyways so as you can see for this session, I decided to use a regular pencil to sketch with. Last time I used a color race red Carmine um, Carmine Red pencil. And this time, I mean, I don't know, like I guess my reasoning specifically was uh, here to choose a regular pencil was because I wanted to kind of go for a similar look as the original drawing from when I was 15 that I'm trying to redraw this time. And obviously you can't see the pencil sketch um, underneath that one even though I do know that I used a pencil to sketch it out first because that was always my process. And so I decided to just kind of stick to it and um, I specifically prefer a much harder pencil than an H B or a B because it smudges a lot less and it actually takes longer to um, dull or it stays sharp longer if that makes any sense um, you know now that I think about it uh, I really really enjoyed the sketching process much more than I have been actually uh, for the past I don't know well I'm trying to remember when the last time I used it was. It must have not been that long ago, honestly, but I do think I, I kind of like it better than using the Call Erase pencil, I will say. And um, I, I'm honestly thinking maybe I should just get some H lead for a mechanical pencil because one of the things I like so much about using this pencil is that it stays sharp kind of long and um, I don't particularly use it in any specific way other than to just make very simple lines and thus I think maybe just using a mechanical pencil might save me some trouble <laughs> honestly because looking back I, I do think I used to um, sketch with a mechanical pencil all the time back in the day um you know like in high school and even later like i remember i used to draw my characters with a mechanical pencil all the time i mentioned this now as something significant because for the past like few years maybe three or four maybe even five years i've been so used to using a pen um a ballpoint pen to sketch with and somehow i i guess i forgot that i used to use other things to sketch and now i'm kind of in a rediscovery process because i found myself with a little bit more freedom in terms of what i get to draw actually thanks to the uh youtube channel has like it's really afforded me that because before I used to mostly draw things for fr freelance purposes and then now like now and then i'd get an opportunity to draw something for myself but I digress um yeah it's been it's been pretty fun rediscovering a lot of mediums that i used before and like some of you guys have probably noticed this is definitely a special sketchbook and i only draw kind of more or less finished stuff in here and obviously have been showing you guys all the pages up uh, so far and i i, I do want to mention that um i made little thumbnails for these illustrations in a different you know the shitty sketchbook that is to the side <laughs> and i um i showed a little bit of that like at the very beginning before i started to sketch this page and i think that's like you know it, it was really helpful i kind of planned out the kind of pose that i wanted to do uh i did a super quick thumbnail kind of in the same style that i usually do thumbnails when i want to figure out the composition real quick and um that helped a lot i I should probably do that for other spreads going forward because it definitely turned out exactly how I planned it to. Before I move on to the rest of the stuff I want to talk about, I just wanted to take a quick minute to tell you guys about the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. So I happen to be a pretty picky person about visuals, of course, because I'm an artist and it's a given. But unfortunately for this reason, I've had a very hard time trying to build a website several years ago when I still attempted to do that. Having no knowledge whatsoever about coding and HTML or anything like that, I was just uh, super like 
nervous about trying to build it myself and it seemed like a super daunting thing to me so after a few failed attempts I just completely gave up. I even remember trying to put an image carousel into my online shop from several years ago and I miserably failed because I couldn't figure out how to properly implement the code that my friend has sent me to do it. Thankfully, Squarespace takes care of all of that and it's super simple to pick and choose different ways to display your art and it even has a built-in shop component so you can have an all-in-one website for your online art presence if you choose. I started using Squarespace a couple of months ago and it's been very intuitive and easy to use and I'm able to figure out pretty much how to tweak anything that I want to on the site within minutes even though I've had no experience using it before. If you'd like to try out Squarespace for building your portfolio website or an online shop, you can head to squarespace.com slash cosmic spectrum art to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Use code cosmic spectrum art and you can find the link in my description. And now back to the video. So I was talking about how this is a special sketchbook and I only do more or less finished spreads in it. And you know, before I move on from that particular topic, if you can call it that, I just wanted to mention that I firmly believe that you can do whatever you want with your sketchbook, absolutely. A lot of people feel super intimidated by the notion of having these super neat sketchbooks. So I just wanted to dispel the illusion that all my sketchbooks look like this. They absolutely do not. I honestly don't have any sketchbooks that are just filled with uh, super finished illustrations like this. And I've, I've always wanted to have one like that. And I think it's, it, it's really fun to flip through. It would be nice to look back on. And so I kind of started the sketchbook specifically with that in mind. And if any of you guys are looking at this and thinking like, oh man, like I can't possibly expect my sketchbook to have a finished drawing on every page. That's totally cool. Um, you, you should definitely know that I have another sketchbook that's going on at the same time that is filled with super messy drawings, half of which look terrible but you know regardless it's 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 the messy one it's the real sketchbook quote unquote because you know this this isn't really a sketchbook i guess if i think about it <laughs> it doesn't have any sketches but yeah moving on so so i figured i'd talk a little bit about how it went using microns for me this time around so in case some of you guys did not watch my previous video that was the one where i used microns uh fine liners to ink for the first time in a very long time, like a few years, and even though I used to use them all the time back in the day, and I believe those are actually the same ones, well, I mean, I used the same type of pen um, for the original drawing from when I was 15 as well, but yeah, I had a bit of a hard time getting back into them, like I mentioned in my last video, but this time around, uh, it was much better because it, it wasn't like a shock to my hand as to how the pen behaved and I do think I kind of got used to it although I think I slightly ruined the tip of one of the 0 0.05 pens because I could I noticed that like some of in some of the lines it looked split like it looked like it was two tiny lines next to each other so I, I must have just pressed too hard at some point and split it but it's still totally usable and it's really not a big deal but yeah so now that I've mentioned that, one of the things that I really wanted to tell you guys about is the overall experience of doing this Draw This Again challenge. And I have to say, this was a massive throwback for me. Like, it was almost like stepping into some sort of time machine, which is an effect that I really did not foresee. Like, I thought it would, wouldn't be particularly different from any of the other sketchbook sessions that I've had in the last, you know, couple of months or whatever. But yeah, uh, how I approached it was I decided to kind of listen to some of the same music that I used to listen to all the time when I was around that age, 15. Um, in case any of you guys are curious, I was like obsessed with Radiohead at the time and it's still one of my favorite bands, but you know, like OK Computer, one of those albums so I, I listened to some of that music and like some other stuff that I used to listen to um, a lot and I'm one of those people I listen to like I abuse an album that I like and I, I tend to um, listen to music and albums I guess for whatever reason so if I like an album I will listen to it about 
a million times in a row before I get uh, tired of it. So I am like extremely familiar with the old music that I used to listen to back then and everything essentially that I listen to at this point. So yeah, and uh, man, it's crazy. Not only has it been a long time since I've really like listened to the whole album in one go like that, but it's also been a while since I've sat down to draw in my sketchbook with headphones on because typically I just like you know, got this habit ever since I got really into YouTube, which was a very long time ago, actually, like just to listening to YouTube videos and, you know, having my typical channels that I tend to go to and watch all their new content. So for me, a lot of that is like, you know, um, let's read scary stories or scary true stories. I love that stuff. So I tend to listen to a lot of that in the background. And, um, as much as I think that drawing is a brainless activity for me, I do think that it does require a little more brain power than I think because I I noticed that my concentration did go up while I was just listening to music instead of listening to some sort of story that demands some attention, I guess, or like a different type of attention. But um I digress. Regardless, uh, yeah, overall the effect was crazy. It was like totally going back in time and it's, I think like of all the things that I've done so far on my tiny little journey to uh, rediscover how to draw for fun again, this has honestly been the most effective thing uh, so far. Like it's, it's been, I've been kind of having a hard time getting back into the drawing for fun mindset for whatever reason. Um, maybe it's because I've just been doing art professionally for so long that the, um, the lines have completely blurred for me between the stuff that I do for fun and the stuff that I do for work. And it's just, it's really difficult to untangle that stuff, especially since a lot of the stuff I do is both for fun and for work at the same time. And sometimes it's stressful, sometimes it's fun, and it's all just this big mess. Even though back when I was in high school or in middle school, you know, when, when I had a lot less responsibilities and uh, trying to make a living off of art wasn't any pressure and keeping up with social media also was no pressure at all. I barely had any social media. I think I only posted on like DeviantArt back then, it was kind of very easy going on all fronts. And so that kind of like tranquility slash serenity that I felt while drawing is something that I've been having a very hard time recapturing um, since I kind of started to try, sort of started to attempt to do that lately. And um, yeah, I th this was so refreshing. I... It made me really think it, it's like it almost put me back into the same mindset for whatever reason um of what it was like back when i was 15 and it, it did make me remember how fun it was and how carefree i felt while i was drawing and i remember that i just sit down and draw something that i thought was just kind of neat or cool for whatever reason and there was no other reason for the drawing whatsoever. It was just drawing something on a whim that was kind of fun. And that was it. And so refreshing to think that way. I, I don't even know, like, I don't think I have the capacity to really look at it that way anymore. Because ever since I started posting on social media for my career and like, like as a supplemental thing to my career and to grow my business and whatnot, um, you know, behind every decision to sit down and draw, unfortunately, there looms the thing of what kind of content is this going to be, like where am I going to post it, and whether I should record it, most of the time I have to record it, and you know, all those things kind of, I guess, slightly get in the way of just being you know, mindlessly serene about the whole thing, but that's okay. It's definitely not a complaint on my uh, complaint on my part because I do feel extremely lucky for the position that I currently find myself in, and I am by no means taking it for granted. So if this is the sacrifice I have to make, that is completely fine by me. But yeah, um, one of the other things that I thought about was that, like, I guess which was kind of neat was that um, imagining if 
my 15 year old self would have um, known that I would be able to reach this uh, level of skill at some point. And what I mean by that really is that I can pretty much imagine what I want something to look like and execute it pretty close to what I imagined. To me, that makes me very happy because back in the day, everything that I ended up drawing was a pale ghost of what I actually wanted to draw. So, you know, getting any closer to the goal um, of what initially comes to mind is, is pretty much, you know, as good as it gets in terms of artistic satisfaction. But yeah, it is. It, it was some sort of uh, validation catharsis for my younger self. Um, not that I ever found myself like particularly upset about my level of skills when I was younger. You know, at least not a not to a degree that I, I found it like debilitating or, you know, I honestly don't remember having art block much back then. Like I could definitely look up my art and see where it would dip and then get better and then dip and then get better again. Like it's it's a lot easier to see that stuff like way, way later, like years later, because at the time it all kind of looked the same to me and I was, you know, more or less happy because I just enjoyed drawing so much. But yeah, um super validating for my 15 year old self which was kind of a nice experience but yeah speaking of skills um since this is kind of a drawing challenge that's designed to see how your skills now compare to where you were at some time ago um i found it quite interesting that uh, apparently, when I was 15, I had no trouble whatsoever being precise with inking and outlining, uh, with line work in general, I suppose, and having super steady lines back then. And um, it's, it's wild that that aspect of my art has actually not even changed at all, like since I was 15 or probably even younger than that. And that is bizarre. Like, it's bizarre to look some of the, like, during some of this process, I would look at, like, a little piece or a little um, area of detail on the old drawing from, like, obviously, like I mentioned, from 17 years ago. And I just, I saw how much precision was there. And, it, like, it just, I couldn't be any more precise even if I wanted to, like, so it, it basically looks the same in this drawing like i'm talking specifically about the um the little skirt detail with the with the lace up um section i really love doing stuff like that uh drawing these clothing details specifically and i have always loved that and i was always extremely meticulous about the details of them and you know i suppose that's something that just hasn't changed at all but um, yeah, the reason why I mentioned this is because it is a, a little, like, anticlimactic for me to see that my inking really hasn't changed all that much. But what has changed very significantly since then is um, super easy for me to observe in terms of anatomy, of course. And um, I would say my shape design has gotten a lot better, of course, because back, I mean, those two things kind of go hand in hand a lot. Back then, I tried my best with design, but since my anatomy no knowledge was like non existent, essentially, everything was arbitrary guesses, and there are a lot of like things that I would consider mistakes, more or less. But now, since I am kind of more or less familiar with the very gist of anatomy, I, there are a lot less like, areas of difficulty and trouble when it comes to that and so i have a lot more freedom with um posing and you know things like that which i was very limited to me back then so i drew a lot of characters in similar poses or just like in a simple pose like the one that you saw me use in the original drawing so that's why one of the decisions that i made early on when i started planning or like when i started drawing the little thumbnails for this was to choose a very fun pose that i definitely couldn't have pulled off back then but i also wanted to um give it a crack using just like the regular pose of the character facing the viewer and um just head on and see what i can do with that as well which is why i decided to do two little illustrations instead of just one and yeah so like i was saying i think i did get significantly better at 
anatomy, design, and just overall little choices. And uh, it's it's funny to see how um, just skill, like a steady hand, and being able to you know draw lines accurately really isn't everything <laughs> and um yeah it takes a lot more knowledge to uh create the type of art that i want to i guess or um yeah if that makes any sense but anywho so as you can see i did swatch the colors this time around before actually getting into coloring the piece because last time I remember I had to do so much back and forth and like swatching before getting into coloring was super annoying for me so this time I just picked out all the markers that I was going to use and I just laid them out beside the drawing so that I wouldn't have to really go looking for uh, whatever I was going to use next. So now we're pretty much at the last part of the video where I'm finally using the markers. It's quite the long video, you guys. I hopefully you enjoy that because it is supposed to be kind of like a draw with me or like a sketch with me video. And I think length, it bodes well for those. But yeah, so I wanted to talk about alcohol markers. Um, I assume that Copic markers and Prismacolors colors uh, also fall under the alcohol marker category. But yeah, I wanted to quickly tell you guys the story of how I started using alcohol markers in the first place and how I came across them. So basically Copic markers were kind of like this elusive gold standard that I was loosely aware of, I believe, but never had any hopes of getting my hands on because I was, you know, like 14 or something and there's just no way. Like my parents were never going to buy me some and I had no money. So that was out of question. But I was around that age, actually, when I started using um, alcohol markers for the first time. And how I managed to get those was basically my brother was <laughs> a university student at the time. And he was studying at Okad University for like, what was it? Industrial design, I think. And he did a lot of quick uh, product sketches and stuff like that. And he, so he was actually using fine liners, uh, the micron fine, li fine liners, as well as gray sets of alcohol markers, because I, I do believe that um, the Prismacolor sets were popular amongst like auto design people. So I I've seen a lot of like illustrations of cars being rendered with these types of markers. And that was like a thing. I don't even remember seeing any other types of art using these particular Prismacolor markers. I think the cars were even on the, you know, like the stands that they have in um, uh, the art shops to like sell them or whatnot. Anyways, things have definitely changed since then. But yeah, that's that's how I was first able to test them out because my brother just kind of left them, you know, laying around, around, uh, laying around the house, laying around the apartment. So I would just come across them and I, uh decided to experiment with them on my own art and because he used very very few colors like he essentially stuck to grayscale sets like the french grays um warm grays and cool grays and then had just a few actual colors here and there um that is what made me very partial towards a limited color scheme so that's kind of cool too it's, it was all just constrictions essentially and that is how i used alcohol markers for the first time and um, the reason why I mentioned this is because uh, it's been a, a very long time since then and obviously I have bought some Copic markers and this time around I'm also using the Art X alcohol markers, big set that as I mentioned in my previous video I got from a friend Tina who is I'm a wonder on YouTube as well. Check out her channel. Um, she just like donated the set to me. Thank you, Tina. And uh, I was going to mention that there is a bit of a difference that I observed between the old markers that I used to use and these Art X ones. And that difference is that I think they just kind of bleed a little more. So not not by bleed, I don't mean they bleed through the page more. I mean, they when you press them to the paper, they just kind of bleed more ink upon touch and that's it and i think the reason why that makes them slightly more challenging for me to use personally is because as you can see i draw relatively tiny and so in order to like stay within the borders of the lines which are obviously very thin it is super difficult 
to not have them bleed all over the place. Like my last drawing, I know that it probably looked kind of neat to a lot of people. To me, it was very sloppy compared to what I usually draw because I just have like this excessive tendency towards making everything stay within the lines and being super neat. But um, yeah, that's honestly the biggest difference that I noticed. Otherwise, they are totally perfect markers to use and there's very little difference from what i can tell like the quality is great the colors are great um they're pigmented you know like i'm not an expert at this stuff but i would say the quality is great and i'm talking about that now because the price difference is huge like copic markers and prismacolor markers are very expensive they're like you know four five six dollars a piece which makes it very difficult for a broke student to get any number of them to be able to like properly use them <laughs> nowadays of course if i really wanted to splurge i could afford them but um yeah i just wanted to say that these alternatives that are popping up in terms of alcohol markers are perfectly fine and uh, they're great i would 100 percent recommend them especially if there's something you just want to try out it's a lot of fun to use them but yeah, so, I mean, I've pretty much mentioned everything that I was going to in this video already. And um, again, I will reiterate how much fun I had drawing this spread. And I would highly encourage any of you to try doing the draw this again challenge if you haven't done that before. It's a ton of fun and um, I don't know, it's a lot more satisfying than I like expect it to be every time for some reason. But otherwise, yeah. We're nearing the end, so I'm just going to talk about random stuff. Uh, one of these random things being the fact that I decided to throw in a pair of shades onto Kim's because, like I mentioned, for whatever reason, in the old drawing, she has blue eyes. I don't remember ever designing her with blue eyes. Maybe I just, like, made a random choice because I thought blue would be nicely contrasted with the rest of what she was wearing. I don't know, but... Yeah, I wanted to retain things, um, I wanted to keep things accurate in this one, so I just decided to throw these shades on her, and, you know, there was some blue in there, but otherwise her eyes are supposed to be the same color as her hair, kind of like a glowing orange, which, um, reminds me, I actually used a highlighter for the base of her hair, and I used to do that all the time when I was in high school, I just used whatever tools I had at my disposal, disposal and um throwing in a highlighter into the mix was a lot of fun i believe i got the idea for that initially because i was a huge fan of hyung tae kim's art character designs um i don't know if you guys would ever have heard of him korean illustration artist character designer for video games primarily um he likes to throw in a pop of neon color now and then with uh with his character designs and so that's kind of where I got that idea from initially when I was much younger and so I still like to do that sometimes. Anywho, that was completely irrelevant. But yeah, I, I also decided kind of as a last minute thing to do a outline around um, the full body figure of Kim's and I, I don't know why you know, looking back, I don't know why I decided to use a blue pencil or just pencil crayons for that. I could have easily used markers, but regardless, as you can see, it's kind of like a gradient effect between pink, blue, and orange. And that's about it for this piece. I had a ton of fun drawing it, like I've mentioned about a billion times already. And I hope you guys had some fun watching it as well. I hope you, uh, you know, drew something new in your sketchbook. And this is the final result, result side by side. I am pretty excited about how it turned out and I do like the recent one much better than the previous one. And I'd um, love to know what you guys think, what you guys thought of the whole process as a whole. And um, yeah, if you have anything whatsoever to share with me, please comment down below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.